Guys, welcome to a special episode of Shot to the Nog. I have with me the master, the professor, the bulldog, <laughs> Professor Leo. Uh, Leo, how's it happening in Dublin? What's going on? Yeah, same, same as everywhere, man. We are here, locked in, waiting for this craziness. And yeah, man, it's crazy. It's trying to be not crazy. Yeah. You know. I hear you. So, like, before all of this happened, right, um, here in New York, it hit it fast. It hit it hard. I know. How was it in Dublin in early March? Man, it was like, to be honest, the things start going so fast, but didn't grow too much. Because when, uh, when you start hearing about Italy, which is not too far from here, right. and Spain, uh, people in Dublin, they start doing this early. So we are lucky that it didn't grow too much, but it, it grew, you know, like yeah. it went very fast. Like we have like a, for the size of the country, you have like a decent amount of people infected and dead and everything. Like every day is like 40 dead. I, I know it's absolutely nothing compared to many other places, but it's still, yeah. this place is not too big, man. It's just 6 million people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they have things a little better under control. Do they have yeah. people? like yeah. not allowed to go outside you guys no, have to everybody's locked in everybody yeah everybody it's has to be in it's like it's a big like uh they are promoting this really well like everywhere you go yeah. people at least where i live in the neighborhood there i live everybody's respecting as much as they can you know you don't see crazy people walking around yeah like no no they are taking care it right. looks like it's getting better it looks like yeah maybe know. You know. Maybe because the population is smaller, I think you guys have a better chance of less uh, infection, less passing person to person. Yeah, which is, yeah. It's great. Yeah, but like, it's, it's still, man, it's a virus, you know. It's dangerous. Like, know. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous, name. man. And I think, More, yeah. Yeah, no, no, I would say just. Um, no. un unfortunately, bro, I think this is going to be a while, man. I don't think it's going to be like tomorrow we're going to be okay. No. This is no, a life, think... life changing scenario. Absolutely. Yeah, it's no, crazy. big, big time, big time. We did already, you know. Yeah. You know what? I think it's going to be harder when all these things is over than now. Because now we still don't realize what's going on. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? So after that, that's when the thing is going to start being real for us. Right. And, like, we're in our 40s. So as even as in our early years, I think the biggest thing that I remember was 9-11 that was the biggest disaster biggest thing yeah. here in this in, in the united states yeah. but uh like i live with my mom my dad my family everyone lives in the house and they're in their eight my dad's in his 80s my mom's in her 70s and yeah. when this really got crazy she mentioned to me in her lifetime she'd never seen anything like no this. i know no yeah and monica the last time that happened for like the 1918 in right. spain or something the spanish like flu right and yeah. As a matter of fact, it's crazy because uh, so many people died back then. We're fortunate that this is happening now in 2020 because we have better doctors, you know, we have more resources. So Absolutely. maybe, you know, maybe we'll be a little better. I don't know if we'll be yeah. great. Uh, but yeah, man. So it's like... Uh, man, the, the danger, like besides the the virus and everything, I think the ignorance is the worst thing. Absolutely. People Absolutely. who don't want to see you know yeah and they are just thinking about the economy they're thinking about the money their business yeah. and everything they don't they don't know how serious they think right right you know what i mean i think this is the worst thing they could have yeah it's crazy man the they should ignorance. open their eyes like ignorance yeah, yeah, yeah. fortunately yeah. here like I'm, I'm not talking about the whole country because we are locked away we don't know much but like it looks like it's getting it's going towards a you know, not to the end, because like you said, I don't think the end is, is not even close to be. No, no. It's, and, you know, no. it, it's, we have to be patient. And the younger generation, the ones that are after us, they have yeah. to learn that life is not as easy as no. it has been. You know, it's, it's, I'm not saying they're weaker. I'm just saying things are easier for the younger generation. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it's, it, it, this thing is, uh, is putting, uh, how can I say that? It's balancing many things, you know? People yeah. who think they are better than the other because they have more money or because they have a better job or this and that. Everybody's in the same boat now, man. There's yeah. no better. There's no yeah. worse, you know? Like we all, no we all can die. <laughs> Listen, 
that when you're a world champion in jiu-jitsu, it's not going to save you. Not at you all, can, man. You can have a 10, 10 world champion title. It's not going to work now. No hip skate, you know? brother. Nothing. No hip skate. <laughs> I know. Yeah, and then talking about jiu-jitsu, man, the impact, unfortunately, I see a giant possibly negative impact on what you and I love to do because mm -hmm. what we teach is, first of all, self-defense and, of course, jiu-jitsu. But yeah. that the important part of that is that you have to have contact with another human being. I so know. It's going to be very strange when, when it yeah. gets closer to the end. I, I'm trying to make videos here at home so people that are locked in their apartments can do solo things. If they have no yeah. one to train with, I'm trying to help them you know, just basics that can keep them in shape and also yeah. keep their mind sharp for when we do come back, you know? Yeah. It's Man, crazy. yoga, it's now for me, the new jiu-jitsu. Excellent. Excellent. You know what I mean? And it's great, man. It's healthy. It keeps you strong. Yeah. It's, it's cool. my new, my, me and Danny, we are doing this every day. Awesome. Like man. literally. It's like um, I start jiu-jitsu. When I start jiu-jitsu, I want to be on the mat every yeah. single day. Yeah. And this is what I'm doing here because what remind me is we are still in the mat you know yeah we're doing moves with the body and like you know what i mean I, in the future i can use this uh, in my jiu-jitsu as well right I can and, use and, it my you know but yeah uh, but this is it's helping me a lot like, because i don't know when i have no idea when we're going to be able to train again without being afraid exactly you know and that's a key word is fear yeah fear, because yeah. I don't know. You go out to get groceries from time to time, yeah. yes? I yeah, do too. I, I have, unfortunately for me, my wife is a prepper. You know what a prepper is? She's been prepping yeah. for Armageddon from 10 years back. So we've right. always had a stockpile of canned foods and all this stuff. We have, we're very lucky. My wife is crazy, so that's yeah. excellent, right? <laughs> so <laughs> this, it's really, it's, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have an insane human being that happens to be uh, well maybe smart. she was right since the beginning she was right man she started watching walking dead she bought a 50 gallon barrel of rice you know <laughs> yeah man but like she's right you don't have to be in the supermarket all the time yeah 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 but unfortunately yeah. we do have to go out for you know medication simple things like yeah. that you and i i personally i used to work in jail yeah. And uh, fear for me is not something I have not felt fear for many, many years. Right. Uh, I have many stories that I'll explain another day. But now simply getting my clothes together and preparing myself to leave the house to go to the supermarket is the most scary thing I do. Yeah. Yeah. Here's I, the same. Same it's here. crazy, man. I have, I put two pairs of gloves. I have a, I made a video of how I make a, sh a sleeve into a mask. I put a mask inside the sleeve. I do so many things. I put a bandana on. I, you know, I have goggles and just to go to get just basic groceries. Yeah. Man. Bread. Yeah. Yeah. Simple go, things. Go to, to get bread, you have to, to dress like a things, man. astronaut. Yeah. Like freaking, it's an outbreak. So, it's crazy how something so microscopic can put a fear into people like you, people like me, that are not used to being afraid too much. Yeah. We have, of course, we have fears, you know? Of course, yeah. But, but not to, put, crazy, a, to right? put everybody in, in their places, you know? Like, you yeah. see how nothing you are. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Doesn't that matter, shows, black belt, doesn't no, matter anything. <laughs> that shows you how big you are. Yeah, little. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's and it's so nobody's crazy. better than anyone. Man. No man. <laughs> and hopefully people learn this. And when we yeah. do happen to meet up again, hopefully people will have a little more respect for each other. You know. I think I think it's, something's gonna change, man. Yeah. Something's gonna change. It's because, gonna be like. Yeah. yeah. I remember 9/11 when that happened. A few days after, you saw people on the street, you know, communicating to each other. Freaking, just freaking out. Yeah. But but it's crazy how it happened. When everyone started to calm down, everyone was a little nicer to each other, a little yeah. kinder to each other, because we lost, at that point in time, what, 2,700 people. Now it's like, fuck, we've lost, what, 30,000 people? <laughs> Man, I saw one day in America, it was like uh, 4,500 in yeah. one day. Yeah. One day. 
Yeah, every day here in New York, we've we've been losing 780, 780, 780. Just today, I think it got down to 500. But 500 people, man. 500 is too much. Man. One person is too much. 500. Know, course, Jesus Christ, it's insane. When we say like, oh, here in Ireland, it's not too bad because it's just 40 people. They meant 40 people. That's 40 people, man. It's 40 people. That's crazy. You know, of course it is too much. Yeah, I feel bad for them because uh, I, I watch the news in the morning and then at night. I don't watch it in the middle of the day. I don't. No, I don't keep watching as well. Panic myself. Crazy. Yeah. I like to stay informed. I like to know what's yeah. happening. Thankfully, we have a great governor here, Governor Cuomo, who's pretty smart and he's right. he, he knows what's happening. He's no, he knows yeah. how to deal with it. But uh, what I see often and I feel horrible is I on social media, I see people posting friends. I personally, guys I used to work with at Rikers or guys that I knew on Rikers, I think I've lost maybe eight, eight friends. And uh, unfortunately, one of our old students, uh, Victor, you remember Victor, uh, Vanessa's yep. husband? His, yes, fa yes. His, his father died. Danny told me. Yeah, yeah, I don't have Facebook anymore, right, but right. Like she told me. She told yeah. me about it. And it's, I feel so bad for him. I sent him a message. I told him, man, that's, he's crazy. And he's, he feels like helpless. He's a police officer. He has a yeah. gun. He feels yeah. helpless. And it doesn't mean crazy. anything. I told you, man. It, yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. You know, these things going to put people in their places because it doesn't matter how rich you are, how strong you are, how black belt you are, how many times you're a champion, yeah. how big is your, your machine gun. It yeah. doesn't matter. None of, that, none of that matters, man. No. What matters is being smart and being safe. <laughs> yeah, simple like that. And then and when, it, when it all ends, I hope people get a little bit more uh, respectful to, to, to others and see the bigger things besides money and power and whatever. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. We have to prioritize what's important because just like that, we can lose everything. We can lose everything. Many people did. Yeah, it's unfortunate, man. And, and it's tough to see. Uh, my students, our students, uh, they're all probably losing their minds at home, sitting. Oh. Uh, we have a group chat here. My students are saying every day they send uh, like an old video. Yeah. And they're talking about like uh, some, some jokes, you know, just to keep you, yeah. you know, entertained. Yeah. My misfits are idiots. They, we just, they're stupid. They're morons. <laughs> They we put the cool dumbest, man. yeah, cool bus. <laughs> yeah. Listen, this is not just there. Yeah. We are the magnet. We are the magnet. They are all over. Yeah. No matter where you go, they're going to follow us. Directed this way, that way, this way, that way, this they're way. They're going to follow us, man, no matter where you go. We but I cool. love it, man. I love it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's why we do that. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, no we, have some, we have some funny guys that I can't wait for you to meet. Maybe uh, on one of the podcasts, I'll do an entire group where everyone... We'll do a massive podcast, Enigma podcast. Yeah, that and would be like a crazy thing. That way they can meet you indirectly, of course, you know, but uh, that's it, nice. it'd be fun. It'd be fun. We have some funny guys on the, on the team. Uh, right I, I'm sure you, you do. Yeah. I'm and, sure you do. And one of them is Coast Guard. He's actually, he's actually essential. Uh, he he yeah. works Coast Guard. He's a funny guy, man, Brennan. He, I, I, I'm, I'm blowing up his head right now because I said his name. He, he's like, <laughs> he, he's, he's very humble, but like if, if I blow his head up, he starts to smile a lot, you know. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I, mean, I, I was there, remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been there. I know the, the type of people that cross our, our oh path. Oh my god, Alex is a yeah. fucking amazing idiot. I, I love him, man. He's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> he makes me you laugh. Should, he calls me. When when it's all over, when everybody is a hundred percent, you yeah. should come to Ireland. So you should. I absolutely be trying to meet you, man, because I, I talk a lot plan. about you. Yeah, a lot but of things are gonna know. change, man. After this, I I. It made me, you know, like also think about things that I need to do because yeah. uh, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So if I make it yeah. that far, yeah, uh, hopefully no, yeah. I can, I can go there. No, it's not, it's not that far from there. No, the, not at the, all. The, 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 the tickets, it's, it's decent price. I think you can find, like, now I don't know what's going to happen, but like right. before I was buying a ticket for like $300, man, nice. which is okay. It's okay. It's, awesome. it's six, six, six or seven hours flight not too bad yeah not too bad so right. it's easy man it's a nice small place people here are very friendly you know especially my students i don't know about the others because they don't care <laughs> <laughs> but my students are very nice it's yeah. one of i have to say it's one of the best group i ever teach before of course you guys are amazing but i'm saying we have like great people all over yeah but i have that here i never had any drama 
like I, I, I used to have and sometimes in New York, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> in Brazil as well. Yeah. But like here so far, I never had any drama. Yeah, yeah. They are so super like chill, you know, they, yeah. they just, they don't, don't care much. They just go, like to train, they go to the gym, just, they train. Yeah. It, in the beginning, it's funny this, because in the beginning it was a little strange because they're very, it's, uh, I don't want to say cold, but it's cold. You yeah. know, you don't see like the way you guys are in New York. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? Mm -hmm. No, they're kind of, what's up? How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, these people are very cold. And they don't <laughs> interact. And then after a while, you start getting used to them. Mm -hmm. They are incredible. Yeah. Very simple people, you know, like you should, yeah. you should come here, man. You're going you're gonna to, I will, work. I will. I planned on, I plan on doing many things. Uh, yes. But um, the great thing about uh, being professors, you and I, I tell this to specific, um, uh, some of my students that need uh, guidance. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're more than just teachers, you know, we're, uh, we're brothers, we're fathers, we're uncles, uh -huh. whatever we need, whatever they need us to be, that's what we are. And uh, I want to go back a couple of years to when you, I saw a picture that popped up from when you and I first met uh, mm. in that gym, Life, yeah. Health and Fitness, I think it was. The yeah, first time Astoria. I met you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was looking at that picture and I was like, man, it's been so long, literally almost 10 years now that I've known you. Yeah. It's it is. crazy. It's, yeah, it's, it's going to be 10 years in April. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's April next year. Sorry. Na right. Na April next, next year. year. Yeah. 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 Right. And it's, it's pretty amazing uh how jujitsu just makes instant family like yeah quickly yeah regardless you know, I, I was yeah. not i was not like i was not uh planning to move to new york right after that seminar i started thinking a lot about it because i said like i can't live in this place here mm -hmm. i can't move here yeah you know after everything i said like i have a chance to move to this place and i was like like it was um how can I say that making this idea more concrete in my mind? And I was trying to convince Danny on the way back from New York right, to right, Sao Paulo. Right. I was trying to convince her and she said, no, man, I just, well, how am I going to do that? I have a son in school and everything. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, okay, go to New York. Like right. every six months, I'm happy with that. Before yeah. we get Sao Paulo, she said, okay, let's do it on the plane. <laughs> awesome that's awesome <laughs> and then when she said that it's like okay if she said yes let's try our best and then that was in april in right. september we were in new york exactly Ooh. i remember that i remember you that. know it was a it was a crazy crazy it's yeah. like same same to come to here man you know yeah we decided in june no not june i think it was in april as well like and right. she came here the same day she moved yeah. to new york yeah yeah how crazy is that that's insane that's yeah. you know it's destiny sometimes things are supposed to be that way yeah yeah but the, the great thing about, about that decision that Danny made, that you made, it created uh, more than just a friendship. It created more than just a family. I think we started a movement. We started, we're small. We're very small. small. A very small legacy. Yeah, but it is a legacy and it will eventually get larger. But it has to start oh. somewhere. And the great thing about, uh, about you and I is that we're very similar. We don't look the same. We don't no. talk the same. No. But our mentalities, the way we do things are very similar. Yeah. And, and that's hard to find because both you and I have been uh, in parts of other groups, part of other teams, part of with other friends and stuff like that. And we, you've tried it with other people and it didn't exactly work out the way it's supposed to be. And I'm not dropping no. any names because I don't want to no, disrespect. No, no I, know, but, I know. I know what you mean. But it was trial and error for both of us. And, yeah. and because of the mistakes that you made, because of the mistakes that I made, it put us together yeah. and we were able to do something on a small scale and in, in many, many variations of it. Cause yeah. we did it with a bunch of different groups of students. We had, yeah. a, we had a section, one spot, a section, another spot. And we, every, it was a cycle of different students, but we did, we, you and I at least stayed together. With yeah. Rob, you know, yeah. with Sue. But that we have also to thank, like not in a nice way, but you have to thank the guys who, who made the mistakes with us as well. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. Because because of them, we we are able to create what we have. Yeah, and it's beautiful you know? now, man. It's and beautiful. we never gave up. This is the best thing, man. We never gave up. So many times, no. so yeah. many times we could have. Imagine no, we now, it's still there, like. 
like on the top of everything that happened now yeah. we have this yeah yeah <laughs> you know, you we're, yeah. <laughs> we're closed <laughs> I know, man. oh my god it's but crazy. whatever we'll get through this also of course yeah uh, the great thing about the journey that, that we have had is uh we've had the the few people that stuck with us through each uh cycle every yeah. we had you know robbie sulma Alex, the Greeks, the Greeks yes. were with us from the beginning. Yes. yes. I raised them. We raised them as children. I remember them like very small. And yeah. Like... And now I have this, the youngest one. I have the youngest one, little, oh, uh, really? little Stavi. And, oh. and she's six. And she just started to train, man. I, gotta I remember put, her. I, I got to put the videos up uh, of her role. I have, I have the kids roll a little differently. The, the smaller ones, the bigger ones, they, they fight. But the little ones, I have them do a little game. But I, call, I have everyone in, in jiu-jitsu, you get nicknames, right? Yes, of course. Uh, I give the children nicknames. And the little one, Stavi, her name is Giggles. Because every time she fights or starts to do some sort of uh, combat, she, f she can't stop laughing. She's just oh, yeah? giggling the whole time. But it's like Savina. Remember when you're going to try to choke Savina? Yeah. She yeah. start laughing. She's <laughs> <old>, so. <laughs> It's the same. They all, She's getting all... choked. Yeah. You know, how crazy our people are. She's getting choked and laughing. Yeah. By the way, Savina's out there too. She's a nurse. She's out there helping the oh, world. Yeah. And so God bless her. And I hope she's of okay. Of course. But, um, it's great. Yeah. So like we've had the, the, the privilege of having the same people stick with us down the line. And of course, people leave, people go, people come for many reasons. Not just yeah. because they weren't agreeing with us or maybe it's just life. Life takes you to different places. You, when you started with uh, Ottavio Petrocino, right? Petrocino, yeah. Right. He, he was your first professor, but then you had to move, right? Yeah. yeah. So you, you, you had to go to another gym. Yeah. Can, you, can you tell us how many uh, uh, dojos you've been a part of? Yeah, of course. At first it was Petrocino because it was... When I start, I used to live in the countryside in Sao Paulo. In my hometown, there was no jiu-jitsu. Few people knew about it, right. but there was no jiu-jitsu at all. Right. And this guy in like three cities away from my town, it's hard to explain because it's different in geography than, but, but anyway, it, let's say it's three cities from us. Right. Imagine you go, you have to go to train in uh, Connecticut, let's say, I don't know. Somewhere in Connecticut, an hour yeah. away from New York, an hour yeah. and something away from New York. So I used yeah. to, to go there every class was Tuesday and Thursday. Right. And there was no like straight bus. We, I had to go with the college bus. There was one college in this city, Lorena, yeah. Lorena, the name. I used to get in this bus from the college. So I get there around six o'clock because I was going with this bus. Right. The class started at eight o'clock. So I had to wait two hours to start the class. And the oh. college finished at midnight. So oh. I had to wait from uh, in the class. Our class finished at 10 o'clock. So wait to 10. I was there two hours before and I was waiting two hours after. Wow. <laughs> Every Tuesday and Thursday to get the class because wow. we, ha we didn't have any jiu-jitsu. And then Leo Castelo Branco from Alianza right. moved to Taubaté. It was a, is a city next to my hometown. Mm -hmm. Very like 15 minutes drive. Right. So, but before I moved gym, I make sure that I make my teachers comfortable about the whole situation. I never, ever, my whole time in jiu-jitsu, turned the back to any teacher. I was very clear. Right. I never stabbed anyone in the back. I went to Peugeot team and I said, like, it's, it's been very hard for me to get here because of this situation. I was training there one year and a half. I wow. got my blue belt from him. Doing wow. that every, I never, I never skipped one class. Wow. So I asked him and said, no, of course, you have to do whatever is better for you. Like to go train with him. I know Leo Castello Branco. Go ahead. I started training with him and then I moved to Sao Paulo. In Sao Paulo, there was no money at all. Like mm. skint, you know, I had nothing. Yeah. And um, there was a lot of club close to me. Right. And Raul, Raul was the teacher. Yeah, Raul. Nice so guy. I started training with Raul, with Raul for about like one year and something. And then because I was working, a few things didn't work well the mm -hmm. way supposed to, you know. Yeah. I left the gym and I went to Barbosa 
Barbosa was a great name in Sao Paulo in the world. Like Barbosa just fought now a megaton. He won. Right. Wow. You know, he started training with Barbosa, but we never, we, we we couldn't see each other because Barbosa was doing college, and I was training in his gym. But I was working at the time, and the only time he was teaching was like uh, noon. Mm. It was when I, I impossible. was working. Impossible. Impossible. Yeah. But Jose and Grace, he had a class before, and I always knew about Jose and Grace. I spoke with him a few years. Like as soon as I got to São Paulo, I spoke with him, and he was, man, that guy was a gentleman. It was a hundred percent. But I was in the other gym. I didn't like to keep changing because that's not my the way I am. I like right. to be, well, you know, life changed. Exactly. Exactly. So I had I start training with him, and since then I never change anymore because he. Uh, he filed my jiu-jitsu let's say that he correct me he gave me like a lot of personal classes right and he showed me things that i would that i never saw before right and he uh he sharp everything right so was so now i'm i'm with hosian since my brown belt and i'm 15 years just in the black belt so i oh. think i trained with hosian around 17 years. Wow, that's just that's with awesome. Josian Grace. That's so and that's think, awesome. Yeah, so I can say that Josian it's my main teacher, of course. But yes. Otavio Peixotinho, which was my first, very important, one of the most important. If was if wasn't because of his mindset, okay. I probably I, it was everything against me. I couldn't I couldn't train, man. I was yeah. I, I, you know like. Obstacles, obstacles, obstacles. All the time. So because of the way he was teaching, he put in my mind the way it's supposed to be, casca grossa, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Mess, pohada, all this kind of stuff. I said like, no, no, I'm never going to stop doing this. Right. And I was trying to find someone that was kind of similar to him. Right. Ocean is a bit more chill than Pichotinho. Right. Pichotinho was very, you know, like. A, yeah, you, you told of, me a, a lot, story. You told a me a story. Energy. Yeah, you told me a story. Wasn't he the guy that uh, didn't put put gloves on you or something? And then you guys went to a <laughs> the first class. Yeah, I just I, I just heard about you. It's my first class. I got into the school and I was so excited because I was doing my jujitsu class. I thought I'm gonna be a Hoist Gracie at the time. <laughs> and he came to me and said, like, "Do you do any martial arts?" I said, "Like, I'll do kickboxing." I said, "Okay." So your first class, he gave me a pair of gloves. Then he called one of his students and said, oh, let's go. And I said, but jiu-jitsu, it has a gi, right? A gi. <laughs> he said, no, no, this is self-defense, but that's a fight, man. Gi is, is a different class. We're going to have gi as well, but today we're going to train in the glove. Just hit this guy as strong as you can, and he's going to do whatever he can. Man, it was a battle in my first class. <laughs> you know? That's awesome. I tried to punch the guy. He put me on the ground. He choked me in two seconds. Like As a self-defense, I headbutt him on the nose so like that was like that that's the only thing i, I knew how to do because yeah. he was choking he was killing me i yeah, said like yeah, yeah. I, i had the gloves i couldn't even tap <laughs> you know yeah. so i i hit him with the, the back of my head and pechotinho yeah. saw that i said like you're not supposed to do that but i like the way you did because it's a surviving stuff right. and then we started getting a connection right. from that on it was just a life moving but since i started training with Josian, it never changed Josian is still my teacher Uh, still my my professor. I don't represent Jose and Gracie Jim because he has his method. I have my uh, my path now. Right. And uh, it is what it is. But it's great. I talk to Jose every time, and uh, he's a great. Right. Right. I don't have such a long, like crazy. I'm old, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. <laughs> not not that much older. You started way younger. Uh, yeah. I think I, when you started, 18? 18, yeah. 18, man. So that's a long time, man. That's, that's a beautiful thing, though. Uh, I'm a little different. I started with Lotus Club uh, yeah. with Eduardo Santos. Uh, when I met him, uh, I knew nothing also. I was fresh off of, of Rikers Island. I just uh, left the job. So I had a mentality of uh, fight, 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 because yeah. I was, you know, I was dealing with inmates every day. Yeah. So uh, When I met him, he was very chill, very cool guy. You know him very well. Yeah, of course. Uh, laid back, dude. And I'm like, this guy's going to teach me how to fight? I'm like, yeah. okay. And that first class, I got my ass beat by everyone in that gym, including a girl. So mm. I was like, okay, I'm in love with this. I need to do this every single day. Yeah. 
I know. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Uh, actually, the way I got into jiu-jitsu, my best friend, uh, uh, he, I was depressed after I quit my job and uh, I was drinking a lot. Mm. So he, he pulled me aside one day and said, come with me. I'm going to drive you to this place. And he got, I got in the car with him. First thing we went is to the, the store next door to Lotus Club at the time was Keiko, right? Mm. And Paula was there and, and, and Junior was there. You remember them. Of course, yeah. And I met them first, and he said, okay, Eric, pick a gi out. I said, what's a gi? He goes, that, just pick one of those out. So I said, okay, and I got the white one. I put it on, and I said, okay, what's this for? I mean, I can't really wear this outside. And he goes, no, 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 let's go next door. And next door, I met uh, Eduardo and Fabricio. Fabricio was there, too. And from there, I never looked back, man. I never yeah. looked back. And I thank them because they taught me the very bare essentials of jiu-jitsu. Of course. You know what's I, funny? The funny thing is, sorry to, to cut no, you. No, no, yeah. You know what's funny? Uh, Eduardo moved to my hometown. Mm. His dad used to live there. Oh. So I, 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 I think he, he got a few classes from me when I was purple belt and was teaching from Alias. Right, he right. moved to the town. There was no teacher there. I think I was the first person who brought jiu-jitsu to my hometown. That's awesome. And he trained with me a f- few times. And then when I moved to Sao Paulo, Fabricio got class from me as well. Ah, cool. You know? <laughs> but I, was not, I, was, I wasn't his teacher, but I was covering teacher because right. he was also in college. Right. Raul was, was, started studying in the college. Like right. uh, I think it was, I don't remember what he was doing. But anyway, so I was responsible for the morning classes. Yeah. And Fabricio trained with me a few times. That's awesome. And then we moved to New York, the same neighborhood. That's awesome. Same neighborhood. It's a small world, right? Such a yeah. small world. Yeah. And it's crazy. Yeah. He's got three awesome babies, man. I've seen his kids. His kids are growing up. Uh, it, it, he's, he's, he's a very nice guy. Fabrice, I have a lot of respect for him. Man. He's, a, he's a top guy. He's very standard. Very serious. Very, yes. Uh, very military also. <laughs> yeah, very serious. Yeah. He's cool. And after, it, works, it works because he makes things happen, right? He does, man. He's amazing when it comes to even the whole function of jiu-jitsu tournaments. The jiu-jitsu yeah. world, he's more, he's more in tune with the entire jiu-jitsu world, not just teaching. He knows. Yeah, like, no, no. He's, he's into it. He's, he's into ways, it. yeah, he's very, and he's, he's, a, he's a great family man, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always like, I'm, I'm still, like, just a, a jiu-jitsu is my passion. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just passion. I never took jiu-jitsu as my work. I never was professional. Right. I was, ne- I was right. never a competitor. Right. Never. It was just my passion and it was, first of all, my life saving. You know, yeah, my, yeah. My, it was saving my ass or if anything. Right, right. When you get in trouble when you're young, you know, you yeah. have to know something. In Brazil, yeah. it's very easy to get into a fight. Of it's course. like, you know, it's partly, you, you are already in. Yeah. So, you know. It saved you. It saved you. Yeah, and it I saved me. Too. Now, every time I teach Jiu Jitsu, I make sure that I tell my students that everything I teach they have to think about in a real situation. Even if they are not, it doesn't matter, man. If you expose too much your face in a weird position, you're going to get punched. Oh, but it's not allowed. It's not allowed in this class, in the right. tournament. But how many times, I always say that to you. Yeah. How many yeah. times you are in the tournament, how many times you are in the gym, and how many times you have to get out to right. go with the street to buy whatever to leave your life. Yeah. How yeah. many times? So you're gonna do what? Betting bolo with the guy on the street. You're gonna do like <laughs> a half half guard sweep with the lapel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that I don't teach them these as well. I teach them whatever I can. I try to recycle my jujitsu yeah. to to learn everything new. But honestly, man, because I'm, I was never a competitor, it doesn't work for real life, from right. my point of view. But who am I to say that, you know? Right, right. But I know how to defend myself. This is the most important. I'm afraid of my student one that time get very used to this kind of modern stuff. And if they get in trouble, because Ireland, you get in trouble fighting all the time because mm. here people don't care, you know? Yeah. Uh, if they have to fight, they fight, man. Right. It's no problem at all. Right. Well, for example, if they get in trouble, they have to get into a fight in a pub or in the field, in this, whatever they are. They're going to do a bit in ball or they're going to sit down and try to do leg locks. <laughs> on the guy. You know what I'm saying? No. Has, you have to be realistic. It it has, has has to. To. This is what I teach, you know. Like yeah. I have a friend here. I don't know if you ever heard about like um, 
Orlando Saraiva. He's a red belt from Brazil, one of the highest. He was like a Carson Gracie, one of the first students. Wow. His son lives in Ireland. He's oh. responsible for the IBJJF in Ireland. He's oh. the world champion as well. And Henrique Saraiva, his name. He's a very good friend of mine. Very mm. good friend of mine. He started, he was training here one day. We met up, we we're talking, and uh, let's train together one day. And when we saw, he went to my classes. I went to his class. We started doing like a connection. Yeah. And he got one of my classes. He said, like, your class is so different because you teach like my father used to do. Mm. You do the same, you say the same thing as my father used to say. Right. And I said, like, because this is the way I learned, the way I, I'm passing what I learned. You know, I said, like, great, I'm going to start training with you as well and bring my students to do this uh, connection because they need to learn about it. And he loved to train with me. And we became a very good friends, you know. Right, right. He's never my student. We train together. We are like, yeah. you know. Colleagues. Yes. You know, right. we, we used to do classes together. When we can, we do it. He visit my gym. I visit his. Awesome. And uh, we have this great connection. He's a great person. Excellent athlete. Excellent. And, uh, and he enjoyed the way I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's for, for life. It's not just for the mass. Absolutely, man. It's not, it's not just for the tournaments, for everything. It's not, and it's not even about fighting. It's a, it's, it's a, mental, a mental state that we, as, as martial enough. artists, we have, yeah, we have to be strong. We, yeah. it, and it helps you be strong because if you're on the mats getting your ass beat by a 250 oh. pound guy you know you <laughs> gotta be about it. <laughs> about it yeah right it was uh, always the smallest in the gym was yeah me. yeah me too i was the same man i used to train with guys that are six eight you remember big baby that six oh. foot eight monster baby yeah uh, that guy Christ. mark was mark his name what the blonde guy tall guy? mike big mike yeah oh, mike mike yeah. Little Mike. Mike. <laughs> Little Mike. He's a, he's a giant, man. Yes, oh. giant. Man. Here we help you, people. There was a guy, he moved now. He recently moved to Australia. He was from Lithuania. Mm. Man, this guy was like, uh. you, you have to do this to <laughs> when he passed by. Yeah. But he was a gentleman. He was yeah. so good. And he started with the strength because that's all he has in the beginning. Absolutely. And when he started learning, that was the problem. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah, well, some new I have some new students that are giants also. Uh yeah. the two giant big black dudes, man. <laughs> I call them the Bash brothers cuz all they do is lift weights. That's all they do. This one guy is, as well. One, one guy's 240, the other guy's 245. So, uh but it's crazy cuz the funny thing is I have this student Brent. Uh, I actually posted his video of of the pride uh on YouTube. He put a guy to sleep, right? Uh but he, I had him fight the, the two monsters, and he ate them up. He of literally course. looked like a squirrel on a tree. He just running around, choked them, finished them. And that's the awesome thing about jiu-jitsu is yeah. that, of course, as a beginner, when you start, strength matters. Well, of course, yeah. Right? But the more you go on, the higher rank you get, the more you learn. Strength becomes the last thing you, you really use. Yeah, I always say these things. I think you probably heard me saying that a hundred times. I say to my students as well, like we have five elements to, to help you. Yeah. We have strength first, cardio. We have like explosion. You have uh, quickness and technique. Right. All of these four go during the fight. Yeah. The only one that doesn't is the technique. Absolutely. So Absolutely. if you just have these four elements, you go, you finish, you finish, and that's it. If you still have the technique, you still can survive, and maybe your opponent gets tired, and because you have more technique, you can win. Absolutely. <laughs> maybe. Absolutely. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if your technique is good, if your timing is right. And yeah. this is something I have passed on to the students here in New York. It's stuff that you've taught me, like the self-defense stuff. I also say it a lot that, guys... If you can do this on the mats here, you should also be able to do it outside on the street. It's not yeah. only about doing a lapel choke, not bananera. It's not all, you're yeah. not going to do a headstand on the street, <laughs> you know? No, but, but you know how to do that too. If you yeah, need. of course, of course. And uh, the crazy thing is, is that uh, I've had people visit uh, the gym from other gyms. I've had black belts come by and train with us, blue belts, purple belts. Everyone says the same thing, that the style that we have is very old school and i yeah. take that as the biggest compliment because when it started it was not about tournaments it was about surviving 
in Brazil, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I had a guy here from one of these uh, competitor competition gyms around. Yeah. They don't know much about self defense. Right. He went there, very polite. He was a uh, blue belt at the time. He went right. there, and he start. He did the class, and when he was rolling with one of my students, he said, "Like man, I couldn't put any bearing ball, and I was trying to do fifty fifty or whatever." I said, "Like listen, this guy is on his knees." sitting on his heels you're never gonna try you're never gonna be able to go all the way there and every time you go there expose your face right so he's gonna just hold your neck and you can't move because your spine is locked yeah so like oh never thought about it so imagine if he if he wants to punch your face right you're gonna get a lot of punch because one of your arm is busy trying to do the deep half guard and your face is exposed yeah so at least at least three punches you get for free in the face and then you try to deal with that but at least the three first ones you're gonna get yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fucking crazy, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, uh, but I'm not the owner of the truth. This is just no, the way we do. You know, that's that's life. And 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 because I came from security, because I came from working uh, in jail in a hostile environment, I always enjoyed that about your style. Was that you always put that first? You always told me that jujitsu is easy. Self defense is difficult because mm -hmm. it's right here, right? You can, yeah. you can, it's right in front of your face, but you never really look at it. You can't yes. see it. I always say that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're right. And, and I tell my students the same. It, and and it, I, it's important. You, you have to, you have to think like if you are like Jiu Jitsu, you have to, you have time to think. Yes. Yes. Self defense, no. no. And also, pretty much every time you fight in the tournament or in the gym, your opponent doesn't want to kill you he wants to kill you because of the metal but he doesn't want like to see you die in that shape. No. <laughs> and uh and you're probably gonna know about your opponent so you know everything is you're you're fighting your opponent's movement you're yes. not fighting your opponent right when you are on the streets you're fighting a, a monster someone yes. else you're fighting yeah. someone that really wants to see you in a bad shape yeah so you have to be effective you have to be quick you have to think fast and you have to, to look everything around you because you're not going to want, today I was watching a, like a live in the official team and Fernando Pinduca's right. uh, Instagram. It was yeah. amazing because they were like, fantastic, yeah. but they were, they were talking about it. You know, like you have, you don't have much time to think. And also imagine if you fall on your back, okay, in the gym, you can deal with that. If you have a great guard, if you have a spider guard, rubber guard, whatever you do. But on the streets, man, what about if the floor is full of broken glass? You are in the middle of the, you know, the sidewalk is strapping your head and you yeah. have no place to move to do the bridge. Yeah. So you don't want to be on the bottom, right. on your back. You want to be on the top, yeah. you know, for yeah. a real situation. So, right. That's important. That's an important detail also when it comes to self-defense. And it's something I tell my students. And I like to do self-defense seminars, but in the seminars, I've changed things a little bit. When I do them, I always, the first thing I tell them is that guys or girls, this class is not enough. You're not going to learn anything today. No. You're going to see something. Yes. You're going to understand some methods, but you're yeah. not going to learn anything. You have you to do this every that. day. Yes. Yeah. It, that's right. And you it's show. something else I tell them is that unfortunately the scenario that I'm showing you, everything that I'm explaining to you, everything is safe, right? This person is going to stand there and I show this to you or he's going to do something to me and you're going to see what I do. But in a fight, an attack, any kind of randomness, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be quick. It's yeah. going to feel like five hours, but it's going to be five seconds. Yes. They surprise and, you. Yeah. And, you have, and, and I, have, I tell this to especially the girls that I teach, this might not work because, number one, you don't have the timing that I have. You don't have yeah. the experience that I have. You must train this constantly. It has yeah. to be something that you do every day. And the yeah. great thing about jiu-jitsu is that unlike other martial arts, other sports, you can't go 100% in boxing, sparring. You can't go 100% in Muay Thai. You can't go 100 You kill each other. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu, you can go full. Yeah. You can go 100%. I can put yeah. you to sleep. I can break your arm. Yes. The one thing that stopped that is that you tap. But sometimes, yeah. you know, something happens. No, sometimes too late. Sometimes right. too late. Right. You, you told me 
Yes, and I have to, I, I say, I tell my students here, it's, it's good because they, they listen to me. And I have a nice number of students now mm. doing what I do. I don't have any medal. I'm not like, a, a, I'm not famous in that, but just the way I teach, the way I roll. With <laughs> Street them. Bulldogs. Sorry, I have something in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> the way I do with them, they, they understand and they like to be in the class. They like to learn this kind of stuff. But it's funny because when I show some, Crazy, not crazy because I never teach anything crazy, but some uh, jujitsu move on the ground, like some spider guard yeah. following like a sweep from the De La Hiva, whatever, getting the love. They get it, yeah. you know? Yeah. When I show them the defense from they're hugging both arms from the back, you have to just swing your hip and defend yourself. Yeah. They get a little bit like crooked, you know? Like they yeah. go like, okay, and they go to the wrong side all the time. They don't realize yeah. because it's not in them. Right. You know, they're not mean they're not, yeah. they're just they just want to sport but like yeah. and i am the one you know when you have the the, the devil and the angel and the, yeah. i'm the devil <laughs> because i keep saying it's gonna happen you have to do this but not me in a mean way but yeah. they have to realize they have to realize man so if yeah. they are on the streets everything they're learning in the gym has yeah. to work yeah. If it doesn't have to work, it doesn't matter. You could doing you could be doing a volleyball or jujitsu is the same thing. You're gonna be so effective the same, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I prefer them training and thinking about it all the time with me like on their minds. Like you have to do it. Don't forget yeah. about it. Look at the punch in your face, right. your face exposed. Right. Until they get it, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely, man. And I think that separates us from other instructors, not disrespecting anyone else. No, of course. We just we just have we just have this mentality that yeah. the sport the sport is great. The sport is beautiful. It's awesome Amazing. to see. But we have it's not just it's not a sport. We don't teach sport. We teach a martial art. Exactly. We teach exactly. people to defend themselves. We teach them to be safe, to help someone else if they're if they're getting attacked. It's not just self defense, it's defense. All for together. everything, for everything in this situation, for example, that you're going through now, like if the jiu-jitsu is now is the invisible jiu-jitsu, the right. mind jiu-jitsu you're mm -hmm. learning. Because for me in this situation, it looks like Roger Gracie mounted me and have the choke in and I have to survive until yeah. he gets tired. Yeah. That's how I'm feeling, you know? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's you exactly know? what it is. Exactly. So, and uh, when you have, uh, when you are safe, you feel safe, you know better how to solve any kind of problem, not solve problem, but you can go through the problem in an easy way. It doesn't mean that it's not gonna hurt you. It will hurt you, but you are expecting or you're used to that. Right. You know, when you're just used to win and doing a beautiful game or doing this and that, when people put you in trouble, man, that's it. You don't know how to get out. Right, right. You know, when your point's not gonna work anymore, if you're fighting for points, for my, this is in general life, right? Try yeah. to, to understand the metaphor, that's how you say? Yeah, sure. Let's metaphor. say that. <laughs> that. If you fight for the points, it means that you're doing a half fight. Right. Your level is low because yeah. if, you, if you win by advantage or by points, this is what you want. Yeah. No, you have to finish. You have to submit. You know, so that's a full objective if you right. want to go for points that's the half right you right. don't need to go more than that yeah and, and funny, yeah funny you should say that because uh recently uh this is something you and i kind of agreed upon years ago that competitions for our team was not important it's no. not something that we cared about Never. right but times of of change and i've had to build a gym and I have such a great group of young individuals that I started to put them out to compete. Right. And they all do excellent. I think every competition I've been through, my team has had medals. They've won. Uh, very few, I think maybe one was submitted in, in the past couple of years. One guy, I think, was submitted. Maybe two. Fat Alex, yeah, maybe him. Not Purple Belt Alex, Blue Belt Alex. Um, but um, recently, I, I see myself when, I, when we're getting close to the, to the tournament, I see myself not teaching offense, not even teaching how to get out of things. More so, I put pressure on everyone. 
So let's say I put you on the mat. I have one guy fight you on top three minutes and you have to survive, right? Mm -hmm. Then the next guy jumps in after that three minutes and he's a little heavier and you have to survive him. And everybody kind of a gauntlet. Everybody fights you because you're competing. So you have to put yourself in the worst possible position and survive, no. right? Uh, yeah. That's, that's yeah. how I, I get my guys ready for tournaments because yeah. there's nothing new I can teach you right? No. You have your game set already. You have your strategy set. What I yeah. want you to be prepared for is the worst part of it. Let's Absolutely. say you mess up everything and you are in the worst position. The, the first time. thing you have to remember is to not panic, right? The second thing is to also be able to think while you're in the worst possible scenario. That's the best part, right? The best so part. this is what, what the metaphor for life is. We have to be just ready for the worst. And of thankfully, course. a lot of people are doing okay surviving yeah. in, this, in this time. Yeah, this crazy no, they time. are. They are doing good, man, because uh, it's, it's, it's like a fight, man. You are in the worst yeah. position. Just have to calm down and, and wait for the right time to yeah. get out. And then escape and then win the yeah. fight. Yeah, I yeah, know. I know. It's, it's crazy. It's the same here, man. We say the same thing. I say the same thing here. I have Philip, one of my black belts here. Mm. He's one of us. And he got literally the, the, the essence, the, the way I, I, I do things. Yeah. He got it and re, he repeats exactly what I say. And I, right. I'm not saying that I'm right or whatever. No, it's not the case. But like, he got it. You yeah, know? he understands. He's passing, he understands. He's yeah. passing exactly what he understood. Right. So it makes me very happy because they know it's efficient for them. Yeah. Yeah. And also like when I'm teaching, for example, I don't, people say like, oh, but you you never showed this move. And I saw like, listen, these moves are in YouTube. People on, who are showing YouTube, they are much better doing that than me. Right. But like I teach something that every single person in the gym is able to do. Mm. Right. If a, a guy is a little bit more chubby or is a little too tall or too small, too skinny, uh, they're going to be frustrated if I right. show something that just my type of body is able exactly, to do. Exactly. I have to show you something that every single person can do it. And exactly. then from there, you do whatever you like. Exactly. I, have, I don't know if you know that I have one student here. That ha he has a brain pulse. He does? Yeah, he does. He, can't, he, he cannot hold, hold a pencil. He He's can. Got, uh, what's that? Um, pulse, Bell's palsy? No. Uh, I don't know. Like He can't speak. He, right. he, he barely speaks. Yeah. Barely. yeah. He can, you have to, to force to understand him. Yeah. He can't move really. Or he can't walk. Right. He goes with the wheelchair. Right. But he rolls, man. He rolls. Wow. If, listen, listen, if you go easy on him, he gets you. Wow. He submits you. That's amazing. He has like great position. He has an excellent half guard. Awesome. He has an excellent foot lock because there's no much he can do. He has no grips. Right. But the way he adjusts his body, just jujitsu can make him happy. That's beautiful. You know, that's the only thing he can do is jujitsu. The first time I see this kid rolling, like in the gym, I was like, hold my, my <laughs> you know, holding yeah. to not cry because I said like, yeah. who am I? Look yeah. at me complaining about the weather in, in Ireland. Right. Complaining because I missed of the, the, the tram. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then I go to the gym and I see this kid that barely can talk, barely can walk, rolling, with wow. everyone. In the first class, he said, he sent me a message after. He said, like, can I ask you to not go easy on me? Wow. Tell people to go normal because that's how I feel alive. That, and that's what beautiful. I'm, <laughs> man, that's what beautiful. I'm going to say after that. That's beautiful. You man. know what I mean? And I have the pleasure to have this guy training that's with awesome, me. Man. It's like um, everyone, you know, everyone. But he teaches me more than I teach him. That's awesome, man. That's, yeah, no. that's, and that's, that's jujitsu. That's the beauty of it. Because, yeah. yeah, we learn from our students a lot. We learn oh, from yeah. them. You know, it's, it's, they, it's, they are my teacher. Yeah, for sure, man. A lot of times I see myself just learning by watching them roll, and they innovate some stuff, man. I'm like, what is that? I never showed you that. Yes. And, 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 it's, and it's really amazing. I have some really great guys now. Um, I posted the videos of some of their fights on the, on the YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, Andrew, cool. brand new guy. Uh, Dylan, Dylan's my beast. Dylan's, Dylan's my monster. I know, I know. I remember. Twisty told me about him when yeah. he went to New York. He said, "Oh, Eric has a student over there that it gave me a really hard time." I said, "Like, who is that?" Oh, it's a blue belt guy, like very 
said probably Dylan. <laughs> yeah, that's his name, Dylan. Because Luis is really talented. He's yeah, really yeah, he is, man. I saw he was very much like you, though. He likes very to do much the upside like down. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. No, he's very good. And he got impressed. Like he said, man, this guy smashed me. Like, I had to be on the top because if I go on the bottom, he's gonna kill me. Yeah. So yeah, man, I know, I know. Yeah. And we're, we're finishers, man. We go to tournaments and we finish fights, which is excellent. Yeah. And people are starting to notice. I, people now, they recognize me when I go to tournaments and they go, oh, hey, how are you doing, professor? And yeah. they're forming little crowds around the fights that we have. Like Brent. Brent is amazing, right? Skinny guy, blue belt. He is by far uh, like my project, right? Because my wife, he also does a schoolwork with my wife. My wife teaches him computers. Mm -hmm. So he started, he's a dancer. He's a dancer. He, when I met him, okay. he's really good, you know, break dancing and all that stuff. Right. And it helps. It helps. he took to jujitsu like that, man. Yeah. He, he is the most amazing student that picks up every little detail and he's always asking questions, always wants to know more, always wants to know more. That's and beautiful. his problem is he has a little bit of uh, confidence problem. He doesn't believe me when I tell him that he's very good. He's like, nah, that's not true. He's humble. But he also doesn't believe it, which is good. This is the same. This is like Danny. <laughs> just like that. Yeah. <laughs> Danny is just like that. He's, she's training with me like constantly now. Yeah. She's going every class. She, she got her blue belt. Yeah, like, congratulations, by the way. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, she has a great guard, man. It's, it's so annoying to pass her guard. <laughs> I have, we do sometimes the classes too full. We do the circuit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You no, know, the circuit, like passing and whatever. Yeah. Pass or sweep, right? Yeah. And sometimes he sweep people, like, or when they're passing, they pass her guard, and they think, they okay, I pass. And then there's a foot coming in here. Like, <laughs> and it's so strong, her legs. And she's learning really well. But she doesn't awesome. believe me when I say that she's yeah, learning. She thinks yeah. I'm trying to make her happy. But right, no, she right, is learning. Right. Okay, she can think whatever she wants, but, like, she is learning real good. And she's doing very good, man. A lot of people... Yeah. They get a bit annoyed. You see the frustration when they try to pass her guard and right. then that leg comes from nowhere and they <laughs> flip them. And it's good. It's good That's to cool. see that, you know. Yeah. It's good to see that. Not because she's my wife, because no, I yeah. want people hurt her over there. You know, I pay right. them on the like just hurt that girl, please. I pay you extra. <laughs> but it's she's doing great. Yeah, I'm the same with my daughter. My daughter Camille. I'm the side say when she was training, because she was in college and you know, she got busy. But before I was like, please kick her behind, beat her yeah. up. She yeah, has to have feel to. it. You yeah. have to feel it, which is cool. But yeah, I, I have a lot of good students, man, and, and I can't wait for you to meet them. No, I and, will, man. Next year, maybe if everything goes well, next year, definitely you're going to see me. For yeah. sure, man. And I'm going to go to Ireland. I will go. Please. Uh, maybe I'll go with Alex because he's from over there. <laughs> we'll take exactly. A we'll take That's a true. Trip. Alex is Irish, right? Yeah, yeah, Irish. yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he was born in America or was born in No, Ireland? he's American. He was born in yeah, St. Louis. St. Louis. All right. So yeah. he's not Irish. I'm more Irish than him. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it's, it's so cool that we can chat. We haven't spoken to each other face to face yeah. since the last time you were here. I know. You know, we it, message, looks like, it looks like we talk all, all, the, all time. the time. Yeah, yeah. Right? Man. Yeah, of course. We're, yeah, you know, we're brothers, brother. We, you know, yeah. Yeah. We, we were family. And I'm glad to see that you're okay and you're healthy and everybody's healthy. Uh, Same here. How's how's Theo, man? How's that big boy? He's getting <laughs> taller, man. He's got. I, I think in a few months he's taller than me. Uh, everybody's taller than me. I don't even think about that anymore. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> every child, man. But yeah, uh, I hope I hope one day when you do come, I have more students and new students, and they're all because they're gonna love you, man. I tell right. everybody that when he walks through the door, you feel like, oh shit, this place is getting robbed. But no. Once he starts to talk and he smiles and he starts shaking everybody's hands, you say, <laughs> how is this guy look like this and it's this nice? It's amazing. Uh, thank you very much, man. I appreciate cause, that. Cause, yeah, uh, we miss you, man. I miss you. And I'm yeah, glad, me too. I'm me glad too. that we could have this conversation and I want to have more. I, wanna, I want us to, to do this again. Uh, with maybe yeah. other people, I'm gonna. Let's, let's, yeah, yeah, I wanna do that. I wanna, I wanna see like Camille as well. How she, she's okay. She's, she's okay. Good. She's actually in France right now. She's yeah, in France. Yeah, you know why? Because the day that they, they closed everything, she was already on the plane heading oh. to France. 
But how is she? She's okay. She's in a, a Lyon, which is a small part Lyon. of France. I know. Yeah, and she's so she's okay. She's with her boyfriend. They're okay. okay. They're healthy. Right. Everything's fine. Yeah. yeah. But I was going crazy. You know what I mean? I was of losing course. my mind. Absolutely, man. I hear but, you. Um, she's okay, and we're okay. So, Good to know. Uh, everybody's healthy. Everybody's okay, and that's what's important. And yeah. I want everybody to know that uh, this is where we started. This person, this man here. Uh, gave us what we have now that we call Enigma New York. I and, got more than I gave, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it had to start somewhere, man. I'm glad it was with you. I'm glad uh, you and I became Same friends. Is. And um, That was life-changing for both of us. It, if it, I didn't indeed. go there, I wouldn't be here, and I would everything, you know. Indeed, yeah. Everything happened for, the, for this reason, for this Absolutely. reason, exactly. We're yeah. lucky that we have, like, a, a friendship, like yeah. a, a brotherhood like we are. Yeah, yeah, look, it's not everybody has. Everybody's not thinking everybody. about business and jujitsu became a big, big business thing. Yeah. We are beyond that. Yeah, we don't beyond care about it. We don't that. care about it. We don't, that's, why, that's why we have the things the way we have because the right. money is the consequence. Right, absolutely. You know? Yeah, we are much more than that. And now yeah. money doesn't matter anymore because you're all locked in. Yeah. Awesome, you know, so there's <laughs> no money involved. Nothing Never matters, money. man. Never so, money involved. Yeah, so I, I wanna I wanna end the podcast here for everyone to cool. uh, to be to be expecting more podcasts from you and I. Uh, definitely, let's do more. Um, yeah, of course. We'll so start. I'm gonna do something here because it's very few times we have this opportunity. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, for you, for me, uh, you're making me jealous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leo, that's for you, buddy. And for I you hope. Too, man. Yeah, Thanks. There you go. So <laughs> down the hatch. Oh, that's, that's water. It's, it's fake. It's water. It's fake. That's water. I know. I don't drink. <laughs> but I uh, can smell it. <laughs> guys, I want to thank everyone and I want to hope everybody stays positive because we'll get through this. We'll get through this. Absolutely. And we're always going to be able to communicate to each other thanks to yeah. the internet, which is awesome. Well, yeah, we're too. lucky that we have that now. Yeah, because you imagine this back in the 90s, bro. <laughs> no. But listen, when you want to do that again, make sure that Danny has to be here because I don't know how to turn on these things, man. <laughs> listen, I don't know if people can see this, right? But on the little screen where I am, it says Monica Gonzalez. And down here, it says Danny Dahigo. I don't yes. know how to do this either, bro. I no. asked my wife. This yes. is her computer. That's her. Yes. That's that is her computer. My phone is here. Yeah. That's <laughs> the only thing I have is this. Yeah, I'm I'm terrible with this. I just started to learn stuff from my daughter because she's great with computers, and you know I chat with her all the time. So and I I can't learn. We're yeah we're <laughs> gave we're, up. we're dumb with with technology. I I miss the old days, but um. Me too. Anyways, thank you for chatting thank with you, me. Thank you, man. Thank and, you uh, very much, man. It was a pleasure. Right, and we'll see you guys uh, next time. Stay tuned, guys. Thank you.